it's Jen. Welcome today in my sewing room, except today you're in my kitchen. I am not a cook at all. I have successfully fooled my family into believing that I can cook when actually I'm so-so. But I am good at pizza. And every Friday night, teenagers descend on my house and come for pizza. So I thought I would share my recipe with you and just you know how to do it. It is amazing pizza. I have to tell you, it's really good pizza. So Here's how you do it. For this recipe, you will need flour. You'll need olive oil and a cup and a half of warm water. Water needs to be warm but not hot. Uh, needs to feel warm, warmer than room temperature, but not so hot that it feels hot to your hand. And you don't want it hot because you don't want to kill your yeast. You will need yeast. There are a couple ways that you can do yeast. You can use the packages of yeast. You can use yeast like this, or you can buy it in bulk. But a package, a little package like what you buy at the refrigerator, like the, where the cream cheese and stuff is at the grocery store, that's fine too. You dried mean, minced garlic, dried minced onion, Italian seasoning. Uh, you need sugar. You need sauce for your pizza. Now I get mine in a big jug like this and then I refill the jug with stuff I buy in a can. It's ragu pizza sauce. You can really do any kind of pasta sauce will work by your favorite flavor. Um, or, you know, buy the pizza sauce in a jar. Whatever you need, pepperoni or mushrooms or sausage or whatever your topping of choice is. Uh, you'll need shredded mozzarella cheese or... And then you need some string cheese. Okay. And you know what? This is not a cooking show or I would be way more organized. Okay, so we're going to start with flour. And I know that my recipe calls for four cups of flour. So, four cups of flour. To this, I add... A tablespoon of yeast and some minced onion. You need a good palm size full of the minced dried onion. You need not quite as much of the minced dried garlic just simply because you don't want the garlic to overpower the dough. So I usually use about, you know, a little bit in your palm, maybe a quarter to a half of a teaspoon. And Italian seasoning. Now I don't always put this in. I'm going to tonight. It's probably two tablespoons. You know, uh, you need a quarter of a cup of sugar. Quarter cup of sugar. There you go. Okay, so now we're going to take liquid and add to the dry. I have a cup and a half of water. To that, I'm going to add olive oil. I'm going to add a quarter of a cup of olive oil. So you end up with one and three fourths cup of liquid. I use my KitchenAid mixer. You can do this by hand. If you are going to do it by hand, you just get a bowl and a spoon and you'll add your liquid a little bit at a time, stir it around, and you'll knead it by hand. I don't like to work that hard, so I do it with my mixer. If you have any kind of a mixer that has a dough hook, that'll work. Turn this on the lowest setting and then I'm just going to take my liquid and I'm going to add it in a little bit at a time. Now if you have a food processor and you want to do it in that, you can do that. You would pulse it and then, you know, kind of just get it to pull together as a dough. Okay, so my dough has pulled together. And so now I just need to take it out of the bowl. It, sometimes this comes out sticky. Sometimes it's less sticky because I don't even know. It's probably got to do with the weather, honestly. So a nice, pretty smooth dough. Now this is where, where you want to get if you're doing it by hand. You just want to get it smooth. You can do this a couple of ways. You can take cooking spray and just spray your bowl. Um, you can spray your bowl or you can just take your olive oil and drizzle some in and then swish it around with your hand. And then you dump your dough in. Okay, there are a couple of ways you can do this. I just put the lid on my mixing This is a really smart way to do it, actually. You can put your dough in a plastic bag like this and it will keep all the air in, rise pretty quickly. Or you can put it into a bowl and then just cover it plastic around. The important thing is you want to seal the air in. Um, so this takes between 20 and 30 minutes to rise. I'll let that rise and then I'll come back and show you the rest. Okay, it's been, uh, I don't know, probably 30, 45 minutes, maybe an hour. And everything is starting to rise. Actually, the easiest one to see is this one. When I put this in there, it was out that side. So this works really well. I would say this is probably my method of choice for letting it rise. Okay, so now we get to the nuts and bolts of actually making the pizza. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need is a little bit of flour on your surface. And your pizza pan. 
Now I have a couple. This is <laughs> a well-used pizza pan, obviously, but it's not usually the one I use. If you can get your hands on some of these, these are really nice because they have holes in them. And so I always use a rolling pin to roll out my crust because I think it works the best. Also, let me grab my paintbrush. Here's my dough. It's risen. You can kind of tell it's spread out a little more and, you know, it's risen. So you just dump it out. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to kind of make it so it's not sticky. Kind of get some flour around it just so that it's not sticking to my hands and it's not sticking to the counter. Now this particular dough makes two pizzas. Now I'm going to take my bread knife and just right in half. If you want to get it into kind of a ball, just do this and you will. And then um, what I like to do is kind of push it down and then I like to like put little indentations around all around the outside so it kind of looks like a flying saucer. What this does is flattens out the edges so that the thickest part of the crust is going to be in the middle. So take your rolling pin and just roll it out. Make the edges a lot thinner then you do the middle. Now, all the experts say that you have to pick this thing up and like toss it around and do all these things to get it really elastic. And I think, okay, well, whatever. This is just how I do it. I always like to kind of lift it up a little bit and kind of just try and get it unstuck from the counter as much as I can. Now what I'm gonna do is take my olive oil and I'm gonna kind of just sprinkle. All over. You can take a paintbrush. Really, this is seriously one from the hardware store. You can get a really fancy schmancy one from a gourmet food store, but really, why? I'm not going to pay all that money. I just want a paintbrush, so cheap paintbrush will work. And you can just paint this all over. Okay, let's say you don't have a paintbrush. Just use your hands. Really. This actually is the bottom of the pizza. So here's what we're going to do. Take your pan, kind of center it so that you've got some edges that are, oh, I don't know, probably an inch bigger. And then just kind of flip one edge up and slide your hand under and flip it over like that. Now, for some people that's just way too much. They're freaking out and thinking, oh, I'll tear it. You know what, really, folks, it's pizza dough. It really is not brain surgery. You can't really mess this up. And, you know, even if you do, it's fixable, so. You know, that's true of most things in life. Most things in life are fixable. Okay, so here is where you want to take your string cheese. Remember I told you about string cheese? Well, you know, in our house, half the time the kids are the ones making the pizza. They'll say, oh, we want to do it, and you just make the dough, which is fine. But lately they've been saying they want me to do it. Well, I say, I will do it if you guys will open the cheese. Because <laughs> I hate doing this. You just lay them around the perimeter the outer edge. Now what you do is just flip your crust over, over top of it. And if you don't have string cheese on hand, you can actually use um, just shredded mozzarella. Just kind of lay it in a little, like a little hill <laughs> going all the way around and that'll work fine. Next thing would probably be a good idea to preheat the oven. So I'm going to turn my oven on to 425 degrees. From here, you know, if you've ever seen a pizza, in your life, you can pretty much figure it out from here. Now, it's ready to go in the oven. So, 425 for 20 minutes. And this is done. Once you take it out of the oven, wait five minutes. I know, it's the longest five minutes of your life when you are starving and you just want some pizza. But if you allow it to set, allow actually all of the ingredients to stop cooking. Okay, five minutes is up. Mm. <laughs> That's so good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.